Landon Donovan leads LA back from the brink. Heartbreak in Houston and one of the goals of the year next on The Daily. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Greg Lalas. I'm Nick Fershaw looking back at a busy night of midweek action on Wednesday night. And Greg, we're going to start with maybe the best game and really an uncharacteristic game for Real Salt Lake. They were up 2-0 early and they lost out to the LA Galaxy 3-2. This was uh, not what we were expecting. No, I mean, when's the last time you saw a comeback from a two-goal deficit by a team at Rio Tinto? Let's not forget you're at altitude, so by the end of the game your lungs are burning. But when the Real Salt Lake defense gives you three goals, mm -hmm then you have a pretty good chance of getting a victory. I mean, it's interesting that this week we're looking at some of the breakable and unbreakable records as part of the numerology uh, program that we're running. And what I love about it is one of the unbreakable ones is the goals allowed by Real Salt Lake, only 20 goals allowed in one season. We said no one's ever going to break that. So to see their back line then go and give up three goals the way they did, all of them basically on defensive errors. Landon Donovan buzzing around up yeah. top for the Galaxy. It looked really good. He was sort of alone up there, but he was buzzing a lot. And Mike McGee showing a little bit more of what he showed in 2011 in this one. Um, I think RSL very disappointed, but the Galaxy starting to feel it a little bit. Well, two straight wins for the LA Galaxy, and you mentioned Mike McGee always seems to play well against Real Salt Lake. Both these teams are in action this weekend. LA at home against Vancouver, and Real Salt Lake at home against San Jose. Well, next up, down in Houston, where Paul Mariner, the head coach of Toronto FC, in his second game at the helm, looked good for the Reds on Wednesday night. They were up 3-1 against the Dynamo at one point in this one, but no such luck. They end up with a 3-3 draw. Yeah, and not only up 3-1 to one at one point, it was late in the second half that they still had that two-goal lead, and then Will Bruin with a brace to end up getting the draw for Houston. I think for TFC, if you had said before this game they were going to go to Houston in the heat against an MLS Cup finalist from 2011 and get a draw, I think the last place team would have been pretty happy, as their fans would. The fact that they had that two goal lead late and they gave it up, sort of indicative of the whole Toronto FC season, so pretty disappointing I think. Danny Cooverman's with two goals for Toronto FC, but still not enough as they settle for the draw down there in Houston. Well, one of the best games of midweek action, Sporting Kansas City on the road at the Seattle Sounders up at CenturyLink Field. The Sounders looking to snap their six-game winless streak. Couldn't do it, though. They fell behind early against Sporting Kansas City, settled for a 1-1 draw. Yeah, an unfortunate goal that they gave up. Uh, Jacob Peterson with a deflected goal that went into the upper 90. There's nothing the Seattle keeper could do about it. But the second goal, the equalizer for Seattle, Patrick Ayani playing in his 100th game in MLS comes up with a goal for the ages. If you guys saw Zlatan Ibrahimovic's goal in the Euro 2012 earlier this week, this is just as good. A flying side volley that they will be talking about for a long, long time. Certainly uh, one of the early goal of the year candidates there for Patrick yeah. Ayani. Don't forget the Seattle Sounders back in action on Sunday in a good one, the Cascadia Cup against the Portland Timbers down there in the Rose City. 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Catch a live chat on MLSsoccer.com. Three other games on the docket from Wednesday night, all pretty good ones. The New York Red Bulls get a draw up in Vancouver. The San Jose Earthquakes get a big win in Colorado. And Chivas USA with a nice win over Montreal at home. Which one stuck out for you? Well, I think that the New York-Vancouver game is pretty interesting considering New York Gotta missing be, lots of Tight players. And they're going Grab all the way across country. And they pull out a draw. Too easy. Just the two standing there and watch the come up done. That was huge. And then San Jose going to Colorado, getting that late stoppage time penalty from Chris Wondolowski, which puts, which puts him now in the lead for the Golden Boot, by the way. So he's got 12 goals on the season. That's a big win for the Earthquakes on the road. I think the Rapids felt like they had the, at least a draw out of that one. Two highlights from this one uh, you might want to go back and look at. Matt Pickens with an early save yeah. on Steven Lenhart, one of the saves of the year wow. thus far. And take a look at the penalty that set up Chris Wondolowski's PK. Did Alan Gordon fake this one when Matt Pickens <laughs> came out to get him? Well, Part of the game. You can find those videos uh, on MLSsoccer.com. The latest edition of Extra Time Radio is coming out on Thursday. We spoke to Houston Dynamo's Jeff Campbell. Cameron about the heat down in Houston, what's going on with the Dynamo this season, and his recent call up to the U.S. national team. You can find that on iTunes and Buzzsprout. Does it for us. We'll see you again tomorrow.